Okay, it's time for a one-year ownership review here. And uh, I've got uh, about 18,000 miles or so in the car. And I uh, have had no warranty issues at all. I apologize for some of the construction going on here and the wind. I've moved from uh, Florida to Colorado now. Um, the tires have actually done really great despite the still constant vibration from 58 to 60 miles an hour. Just can't seem to get rid of them. I recently climbed up some really high terrain in four low in Utah and these tires did great and I didn't even have them deflated. Uh, as far as paint goes, I still have the one blemish there that I got from a lady that decided to lean up against my car. I've got one rock chip there if you can see it, which just happened on my trip to Colorado. I've been back and forth uh, three times across the states and have a few rock chips. You know, that's to be expected here. Uh, but for the most part, the paint's doing pretty well. I did get a nice owie here from a garden cart, I think, at a tree center here in Colorado. See if I get that to focus. It's a, it's a pretty good gouge. Might, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to use a uh, touch-up pin on that. I'll probably have to get that professionally touched up. All right, so that's the, that's kind of the review of the outside. Once again, nothing warranty-wise. It's been doing real well. Oh, now this is my fault. I am a little disappointed in the quality of the paint on the on the uh, the plastic here. You can see all that came as a result of me dragging a very large box out of the back of the truck. I didn't extend my cargo deck like I should have and so when I pulled that weight out and it rested on that bumper and I finished pulling it out it scraped it pretty well so uh, that's my bad but it wasn't that heavy it shouldn't have shouldn't have done that much damage all right everybody uh, I'll give you a, a preview inside next I wanted to add to this review a little mileage update here I have uh, let's see 18,631 miles today. I've been running this tank now for, let's see, it's 182.7, I'm averaging 19.8. So that's, that's pretty typically what's been happening. I uh, have switched over from premium back to the uh, 87 octane, which is the recommended fuel, and lo and behold, it's gotten better. I saw a video on YouTube about that that uh, if it recommends 87 then run 87 so i've been running 87 my gas mileage has actually been going up even with uh, over time as everything gets broken in i've, I've noticed that uh, things have got a little bit better and this is a kind of an around the town mpg that i've been getting so i'm pretty happy with it i have to this date like i've said before i've had uh, zero zero maintenance issues zero recall issues Everything I've had happen has always been inflicted on me by others like the rock chips and the paint and door dings and, and all those kind of things. I've had uh, really impressed with the off-road capability as well as the tires and as mentioned before, just that vibration at, at uh, well, 58 to 60 miles an hour that I just can't seem to get rid of with the Duratrax. I understand I was talking to uh, a guy at, uh, at, uh, at RSG Off-Road down in Denver looking to put a three inch lift kit on and he mentioned that even the KL2s now have developed a kind of a wobble around that 16 miles an hour also and uh, he was recommending I put some Falcon on. Uh, I'm going to look at a, a three inch lift and probably uh, the 33 inch tires the 285 70 R17s they'll actually fit on these on these TRD rims so I'm looking to looking to do that so um, hopefully we'll see that mod coming up in a, in a bit and uh, anyway just wanted to give you that update hey let's talk let's talk technology or at least the the absence thereof the forerunner you know i found it to be once again very basic we've talked before about some of the things i like and i don't like the infotainment system is very basic just about every function function has that little eco bar I did manage to disable the equal light because it was just irritating to me. Um, the uh, you know the the, the center uh, infotainment system over here, you know it's pretty 
it's pretty basic. It's not that big. I understand that the 2024 winners are going to come out with a new one. The knobs are big. There is no separate climate control system. Uh, the AC environmental controls are just very, very basic. And uh, you get you know your temperature on one side and your fan on the other. Uh, I have the stick shift, which I like. Now, let me let me tell you, I've, I've, of all my subscribers. Half of them are upset that the forerunner is so outdated. And half of them are like, hey, you know, you don't mess with something that's working. And I'm going to be probably in the camp of those that are, you know, don't mess with something that's working. Because it is. Everything's very reliable. Nothing really fails. And it's simple. And if, you're, if you're doing some operations in the winter where you got gloves on, the larger knobs are, are, are kind of nice. Now, in a perfect world, I would like to have a bigger screen. I'd like to have a little more information available to me on uh, on this infotainment system. It's, you've got your, your average uh, miles per gallon. You've got a, basically a current fuel flow. You have a range, uh, laps time, your speed readout, your wheel position, which isn't really detailed enough to be honest with you to use it off-road and uh, those are just some settings where you can change the metrics for the Canadian folks. A blank screen in case you don't like to look at anything there. And once again we're back to the average screen. That's about it. It would be nice to have uh, some incline kilometers, some some uh, you know some tilt and roll type stuff. It would be nice to have really nice to have pressure readouts on your on your uh, on your uh, wheel pressures. Now, for those of you who have paid attention to some of my other videos, you might have noticed that lurking in the background is a uh, uh, an LC200, Land Cruiser 200 series that, that belongs to my wife. It's a it's a year new. It's a year older than mine. It's a 2018. It's got less miles on, only about 13,000, and it has the you know dynamic cruise control. It's got the lane departure warnings. It's got a pre-collision warning system. It's got uh, blindside monitoring. It has uh, a rear cross-track warning in case somebody's walking or driving behind you as you're trying to back up. It's got park assist, which is your sensors on your side. It's got a 360-degree camera. Uh, let's see, it's got a uh, full... Um, HVAC, it's like a six different zones that are controlled. You know, the driver and the and the passenger have their own environmental controls. They're each uh, separate. Separate, uh, of course, heated seats. It's got the heated steering wheel. It's got uh, a cooled front and, and uh, passenger seat. It has a there's a there's a uh, some vents on the center stack that cools the back. The back two passenger seats have uh, are heated. And then there's a and then there's a separate uh, zone for the the full back passengers all the way back with air conditioning and heating. So it's um, it's got a lot of, of cool stuff on it, and uh, the infotainment system on it, the info center system on it, is actually really very is very nice. It has an eight speed transmission mated to the uh, the Tundra 5.7 engine, and just recently I got 21 and a half miles per gallon going to and coming back from Utah. So about a thousand miles, I, I averaged 21 and a half miles per gallon. Pretty phenomenal. Well, that's what about this, that's basically what the 4Runner does here with a four liter and a five speed. Now, would I like to have a, a, a more a more gears in the transmission? Yeah, I think that would probably help out in a lot of ways and maybe a little more horsepower, but uh, it's mated well with this particular unit. Now. For those of you who are like, yes, I hope Toyota goes to all those cool things. Well, let me tell you, my uh, environmental system for the passenger side went down twice. It went down, uh, and then when I took it in to get it fixed, it mysteriously was working. A week later, it failed, took it back in, and it took two weeks to get the appointment to be able to take it in. And... Uh, while we were waiting for those two weeks, we took a trip to Utah and the pre-collision warning system kicked off. Well, it had actually kicked off a month earlier for a short period of time. 
And that was one of those times where they tell you to, um, you know, clean off all, clean off the emblem, you know, clean off all the sensors and stuff like that, as as part of the uh, troubleshooting, which we did, and it, and, it, and it worked again. Now, when the pre-collision warning goes off, um, you also lose your dynamic cruise control because your dynamic cruise control will apply braking, so you lose two of those functions when that uh, when that happens. Well, while we're waiting for our appointment for the environmental control on the trip back, we got the pre-collision warning kicked off, dynamic cruise control kicked off, and would not reset. We got home, we cleaned everything off really well. It still wouldn't work. So when I took it in for that uh, warranty work on the the environmental system, we also had them work on the pre-collision. So after two days the dealership was unable to fix any of it. They had no idea what was going on. So they called the regional Toyota folks who took four days to saunter out over to the dealership and uh, start looking at it. And they fixed the environmental control system by doing a firmware update that was not out yet. Okay, so what does that tell you? They've been having a lot of problems with uh, that environmental co computer and control and so they have been working a, a firmware update on that so that, that tells you that that's just not me that's having problems with that and uh, because there weren't any codes associated with the pre-collision warning kicking off once again the dealership couldn't figure out what to do with that and it took the regional Toyota guys to coming in and they discovered that the millimeter wave radar was out of alignment now how does that happen it was working just fine on the trip over to Utah to visit my son. So, how does it uh, how does it not work on the way back? Anyway, so we uh, so they uh, they realign that and everything's working. So that's one of the things you got to deal with with technology. My so that Land Cruiser was was in the shop for seven days. Not an apology from Toyota. Not an offer for a rental car. Um, not a whole lot of updating. It was a pretty frustrating experience, which is which is kind of rare for Toyota. But anyway, those are some of the issues you got to start worrying about. The more the more technology stuff starts to break, and you take a Forerunner, you start adding all of those sensors to it, and you start lifting it, and now all that sensor stuff has to be recalibrated. All right. When we uh, I put a I put a rock into my wife's car with 500 miles on it, had to replace the windshield. And it was about $250 to realign the lane departure camera uh, system that's up in uh, as part of the the assembly behind the uh, the rearview mirror. Where you've got a, you've got your your camera that detects the the water on the windshield for your automatic wipers, and then you have your lane departure camera that's that's up there as part of that. So anyway, just a quick little discussion here on on technology and why I kind of lean towards keeping the forerunner out of the technology realm and uh, leaving it in uh, its, its working configuration where it's uh, it's got a long track record of, of good functionality so I don't I don't need to I don't need to push start stuff um, a, little, a little more infotainment system you know computer readout stuff in the center maybe a bigger screen but other than that I'm pretty happy with it all right, folks, I hope this was helpful. Take care. Bye.